welcome to your fourth Roblox scripting tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at events. So events detect when something happens in the game, such as when a new player joins or when an object touches a part. When an action occurs that can trigger one of these events, we say that the event is being fired. Now events are coded by Roblox behind the scenes to detect whenever these actions happen. So we don't have to worry about how the detection works or writing any code to deal with that. What you do need to know though is how to run code when an event is fired because this is how we make our games interactive. This is how we make code that kills a player when they step on a lava brick for example. In the last video we looked at functions. Functions allow us to write code which won't execute straight away when the script starts running meaning we can execute it whenever we want later on in the script. And when we set up an event in our script we provide it with a function and we tell the script that we want this function to run whenever a certain event is fired. So any code that we want to execute, so like I said in the example before, we could write some code which um, removes player's health. We can put that in a function and we can set it up to run that function whenever a player steps on this brick, for example. And we can use one of Roblox's inbuilt events, which they've already coded, to detect when someone steps on this brick. And then when they do that, we can tell the script to run a function. And we could have a function that will kill them by removing their health. So this process is known as connecting the event to the function. We're going to be telling the script what we want to do when the event fires. Now, we don't know how to do this yet, so I'm going to show you how to set up an event. There's a lot of events in Roblox. There's a set list. We can't just um, make up an event by ourselves. Well, we can, but that's a completely different video which we'll be getting onto uh, later down the line. But for now, all objects in Roblox, as they have their own list of properties, they also have their own list of events. And to find that list, we're going to go to the View tab and we're going to click on Object Browser. Now, on the left side here, we have a list of all of the different objects that are available to us in Roblox and they're named by their class name. Now obviously we have a part in the workspace, it's called test part, but its class name is a part because it's still a part. So we're going to find our part and now on the right side we have a list of all of this all of this part's functions. So a part can have functions, we'll get onto that in a later video. They are the pink icons. They have properties. All of these blue icons are the properties such as brick color, uh, can collide, anchored for example. But we also have these lightning bolts and these are our events. Now, like I said, these are created by Roblox and there's only a set list of events. So in this case, we're going to be looking at the touched event. Now, this event will trigger whenever a player steps on a part and we can set up this event to trigger a function when it happens. So to set it up, very easy. We're going to be using this touched event. So let's go to our script. Let's just delete this code because we're going to be doing some events. And firstly, like when we were looking at properties, we firstly had to reference the object. So in this case, we're going to say game dot workspace dot test part. OK, we have now got our object and we are ready to uh, select the event which we want to trigger a function. So we do a dot. And you can see we've got our list of properties. Now, if we scroll down through this list, you can see we get to our events and we want to use the touched event. So whenever somebody touches this part, we are going to connect the event to a function. We don't have a function right now, so let's create a function. Let's just leave this here for now. I know there's a red line underneath it, but don't worry. But let's create a function, OK, that is going to what should we do? Let's kill a player. OK, so we've given our function a name. Let's put in some brackets and let's add in the end here. So now any code that goes inside this function will run whenever our event is fired because we're going to set up that connection in a minute. So let's not worry about the code that goes in this function for now. But imagine we've got our function complete with our code to kill the player. We can now say colon connect and then we'll do a pair of brackets. And then what we want to do is we want to put the name of our function in here. So what we're saying is when a player 
steps on this part, we are going to con we're connecting this event to this function, and we're saying run this function whenever somebody steps on this part. Now, if I was to put a print in here to say let's kill the player, because we haven't got into if we just uh, do some code to kill the player, it's going to add a little bit more time. So for now, let's just do a, a print statement. Let's open up the output and let's join the game. Now, if I step on this part, you can see it says, let's kill the player. And you can see I step off and it stops printing. Okay. You can see it's printed 10 times. I'll get onto that in a later video. That's because the event is registering for every single body part. So it could be registering for my left foot, right foot, um, left uh, leg, for example. But if we step on it again, you can see it keeps printing out, let's kill the player. So every single time I step on that part, it is now running my function. And yes, I could have some code in here, which kills the player uh, if you really wanted to, but you get the idea, okay? You may notice that when we wrote in the function name here, when we went to call the function, we didn't have any brackets. And that is because when we are uh, putting the function name in these brackets, we can't pass any parameters to them. But what happens is the event automatically passes some pr uh, some arguments to the function uh, with some data uh, which it may have collected from the event. So, for example, what part actually touched the brick? And we'll get onto that a little bit later on. But events fire every single time an action happens. So in this case, it fired 29 times, not just once. So don't think that, you know, just because an event has fired one time, it's not going to fire anymore. It can fire... Uh, for as many times as it likes, uh, as long as the action keeps happening. Now, this isn't the most common method of writing an event function, because in this example, we have predefined our function. Normally, people will define their function inside the connect statement. So let me just get rid of this function here. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove kill player from the brackets, but I'm going to just expand the lines here, uh, give a bit of a gap between the two brackets or parentheses here. And then inside of here, I can write a function. This is an anonymous function. It's a function without a name. Whenever we uh, do an event function like this, where we define it inside of the connect brackets, we don't give it a name. It's an anon anonymous function. So we just put our function in here and then we can write some code such as you stepped on the part. Okay. Now this will do the same thing. It will print whenever we step on the part. It will run this function. The only difference is, like I said, there's no name to the function and this function, we don't call it. We just have to put function end and it will run uh, as soon as you step on the part. Now, the, the, the best way to set this up when you write it is like this. Okay, so you have your connect brackets, you put your function in here with your two brackets and then you end it with a closing bracket. Now this is this is like the this is a common practice how events are set up, how event functions are set up. They're much uh, quicker to write out, they take up less lines and they're my preferred method uh, in my opinion. And just to show you if we run the game here, it's going to uh, it's going to do the exact same thing if we step on the part. You see it says you stepped on the part. So a simple way to remember how to write an event. Firstly, you're referencing the part then you're getting the event which you want to use, then you're connecting it to a function, and then you put your code that you want to run within that function there. Now, I said earlier about parameters and arguments. So when an event fires, often they will automatically send some information to our function as arguments, such as the player who joined the game, or the thing, the object that touched our part. Now we can see these parameters in the object browser. So if we go to our touched event here, you can see inside these parentheses here, it's got one parameter and that is the other part. So the other part that will have touched our part, which we've got the event for. So it sounds a little bit confusing, but our parameter then, we just give it a name. So let's just say um, the part that touched the brick. Okay, I've made it a long um, parameter name to help with the explanation. So you can call your parameter whatever you like, but like I said in the previous video with functions, you have to get the order correct. So the event is telling us the order. So if we had um, two parameters, for example, like in this one here, ancestry changed, we've got two 
uh, parameters, one for the child, one for the parent. So the child will come first, the parent will come second. So you'd have to write them in order. So you'd have to give your names for your parameters in order. So it could be the child, the parent. But if you got them the wrong, wrong way around, then you would, you would mix it up. So we're going to use the other part that touched the brick and the event automatically passes the arguments to us. So we don't have to worry about passing that argument to the parameter like we did in the previous video. We don't have to worry about that. The event is going to pass it to our function for us. We're just putting our parameter in because that's what the um, object browser has told us to do. It's as if the script is calling the function for us and adds the arguments so we can access them in our function by adding these parameters in order. So I could then print the, the part that touched the brick dot name has touched the part. Okay, and we play the game and step on the brick and you can say, look, right lower leg has touched the part. So that would be this part of my body or right upper leg has touched the part. So I can I can touch the brick at different with different parts of my body. So it's printing that each time because every time the brick gets touched, Roblox is passing the part that touched the brick to my function and uh, then we can use that to do things in our code. So, you know, if a player joins the game, we can use the player added function. So if we go to um, players, game.players is a service which deals with um, players in the game. Here we go, players, and it's got an event called player added with a, with a parameter of the player who joined the game. And whenever it says instance, that means it's an object. So we know that it's going to be an object in the game. So we could say game.players.playerAdded. We're referencing the uh, the service or the object. We're then getting the event called player added, and then we connect it to a function. So let's write a function in here, an anonymous function because it has no name, it just has brackets on the end of it. And then we could have our parameter called player. You can call it whatever you like. So it could be called the player. And then I could say print the player.name has joined the game. And I say dot name because the player is an object. It's going to be my player. And so it will have a name property. Now let's join the game. And straight away, it should say Alvin Blocks has joined the game. So I'm sure you can see the power of events. They can detect when things happen in the game and we can run code to do things. So for example, you know, a, a practical example, if you wanted to add a leaderboard, add some a cash value to a player whenever they join to show that their leaderboard you could do that whenever they join and you could use the player a parameter to access that individual player and to add uh, values or currency or leaderboards to their player now it's possible to disconnect and have events inside events essentially nesting them but we will look at this in a future video you don't have to worry about those right now we need to learn a few other topics before we get into that but that will be fine but it's where you define the event listener which matters so this is called an event listener because it's listening out waiting for the event to happen now if i was to add a wait 10 seconds here it would not detect that i joined the game because i would have joined the game before the event listener was set up you can see it hasn't printed out alvin blocks has joined the game that is because uh, it will only start listening for new players joining the game or whatever the event is once it's been uh, set up and we set it up after 10 seconds so it's missed me joining the game so that is why when you have a player added event you want to have it at the top of your script because you want it to start listening when the script starts running anyway that's functions and events i hope this video was useful if it was drop a like don't forget to subscribe share it with someone you know and i'll see you in the next one it's been really fun making this video and we're gonna have a lot more fun with events in future videos because they are a game changer for building roblox games thanks for watching